Hello, everybody. Uh, this is going to be my first video on YouTube. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking about a topic that probably hasn't been discussed already in this space. And uh, it's something that I think is important and I see a lot of questions about is how do I set up my project? Uh, you know, are my scripts in the right place? Are my assets in the right place? What do you want to do? In my opinion, this is the way I do it. And I'm going to be showing you some ideas and how you can generate your own process of thinking and generate your own uh, framework and module loader type uh, concepts and see how you can apply these ideas to your game. So the first thing we're going to need is a game idea. And so I've already written up a game idea here. Uh, basically, it's a Mad Murder style game. And there's some simple things that we might want to include. Uh, a round system, a shop system, a player manager for handling uh, roles and tools. An interface handler, which uh, shows all this information on the client. Um, and then some information that we're going to have to represent on the client. And that we'll need uh, to show for items and stuff. Knives, knives, guns, and crates. And so when I say information, this is stuff that you'll store in the replicated storage. That holds all the information on items you'll have in the game that you'll access later. And this will help fill out all of your shops and your inventories and stuff. Um, so first of all, the first thing we're going to want to do is either in our minds or on paper, we're going to want to do something similar to this, where we list out all the things that we think we might need and how we might want to structure it. As you can notice, I've grouped these higher level, uh, singletons with each other. And this is what's going to be kind of the core of our system. And then I've grouped this information that we access when we need it. Uh, all together. And so that's the, there's kind of a difference there between information and then a singleton. And so uh, if we hop in studio here, we could start by saying, uh, and I won't be writing any code, but I'll just be generally outlining. We'll say this is our server loader. And uh, perhaps we could add some modules in here for uh, this one will be player handler, shop handler. Uh, round handler. And then similarly on the client, we'll do a local script and we'll add a module script. And so we'll look at it something like this. And I've quickly thrown it together. But the concept is that the server will load any modules under it. And uh, each of these modules contains its own functions and actions. Uh, similarly with the client, I like to put my interface under the starter player scripts instead of the starter GUI. And then I just pass the GUI into the interface um, module script. A practice that I find that is also pretty nice is if we have a module script in here. And let's say that this is, we call this display round information. And so this shows stuff like, theoretically, it shows things like um, the time duration of the round, or your role, or whether or not it's an intermission. And so then we'll say something like this, where we pass in our GUI base, which could be a screen GUI under here. So the idea of this framework is that the interface module will require this module, and it'll return this function. And this module has the core purpose of displaying the round information. And then, of course, you can add as many of these as you like for, uh, you know, handling a team, uh, not team selection, handling a inventory and shop and um, things like sound and settings, you know, all that, all that client information that we need to display. So I'll put that under interface. Additionally, if we have something on the client, um, maybe it's like a trade handler that handles the background logic for trades on the client. Uh, you can put that here at this level. And uh, you'll start to see this uh, idea form where we have handlers under a loader and then uh, sub-modules that are uh, interfaced with by the handler. So that's all great and good. We have code, but how can we talk to each other? So something I like to do for our events is just make a folder called event and inside, we'll put a few more folders and 
I just store all my events in replicated storage. Um, I don't have an issue with players seeing the server events or the client events. Really, they can't do anything with those if you put a findable event in here. The client can't do anything with it. And uh, even on the client, if they have this findable event, usually this is just to get some information from another source. Usually it's the remote events which where um, real information is transacted, transitioned, and um, that's where players can exploit the most in your game. So this is where we'll be putting our remote functions, remote events, and unreliable remotes. And usually I'll name it something along the lines of, if it's for the round handler, I'll say like round start, round, and then I'll use a notation like this so that I can easily see um, what, what kind of grouping it is and what the action is. And then if we go into our round handler, a notation that I like to use is something like this, where we start by decline, saying REV for remote event, and then underscore, and then the name of the action. And so when I'm programming, uh, I can easily know that if I'm in like a function, say, and I want to call, and I want, I know I want to do a remote event to start the round, uh, REV underscore, and we'll get the autocomplete for all the remote events that we have. And people don't realize this, but the autocomplete is very powerful. So I like to give very verbose names for my function. So uh, round start send messages. And you might think that's long, but if we come in here, notice it autocompletes it. We barely even need to type. We need to type ROU and it fully auto completes it for us. We can type those verbose uh, names in our handlers, and this is the notation that I like to use for my events. If I was going to do a remote function, I'd do it, I'd prefix it with RFN, a remote uh, bindable event, I just like to use EV, and a bindable function, I just like to use FN, uh, the R denoting that it's a remote. Additionally, along with our events and our scripts, we're going to store a lot of assets. So I like to keep an assets folder in replicated storage, and usually an assets folder in server storage. Things you're going to want to put in your server storage assets are things that the, only the server needs. So maybe this is a map, uh, maybe this is a limited time item that spawns in the world only on the server side, something like that. Things in the replicated storage, both sides are going to need. You should probably know this by now. And so we can create, I like to create folders in here for models, particles, sound, um, interface, all the things that we might need. And I'd like to put them under their own folders so everything can be nice and sorted. And later down the line, as you start to add more and more and more to your game, uh, it doesn't become this, you know, big mess, this big spidery mess of uh, assets. Something else that we like to have is a data folder. And this is where we're going to put in all that data that we had back here for knives, guns, and crates. And so we'll say knife info, gun info, crate info. Oops. Didn't mean to change the color on my keyboard. <laughs> I'll set it to fire setting. And under these, I usually like to put something like Default crate. Default knife. And default gun. So what we've got is each data type that we're looking at in our uh, information that we think we're going to need to store. We have a higher module that handles getting uh, the information. So in here you might have a module dot get ID and it'll return it'll return some value. Um, basically it'll find this module and return it for you. And so then as we add more and more crates we don't have to you know say require create whatever we just say create info get. And along that line, as we add more knives and more guns and more data, 
uh, we use one single source to interface. The idea being that we start at our script, it goes to our info, and our info is what branches out and finds it and gives it back to you. We don't want to be branching out and finding it in our script. Uh, that'll clean up your main script and it'll be better for getting that information across from different sources because it'll be the same function, which will be more reliable. And say you make a change to the function, like we want the create info to only return the contents. We don't want to know anything else. Then we can make a dot get contents function, you know. And we can give it the specific behavior that we want. And in the future or the past, when we want to change the way something happens, say we just want to get the contents now, we just call this module.getContents. And we wouldn't need to write out something like require module default create contents. We wouldn't have to do that repeatedly. And then if it's a variable, you'd have to add like uh, find first child, you know, and it expands. And you don't want to type that multiple times. So we'll have this one source that can get all these other sources for us. And we haven't even written any code yet, and you can already tell that our project is getting pretty big. Um, granted, a lot of this is placeholder, but a lot of this stuff is key to the idea of managing and making sure that your project is well maintained and organized. And the biggest thing about that is that when you create a game, having these core ideas in place can help guide you with what things you might want to complete. But you don't want to go in starting by creating all the handlers that you think you're going to need. If you're making an RPG, don't, you know, don't go in like knight class, mage class, rogue class, and then XP, guild, blah, 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 blah. Don't fill it in with all the things you think you're going to need. Um, just understand what you think you might need to begin with, the first three or four things. And then as you come up with more ideas and plan to expand your game more, that's when you start to add more handlers and more information and all that stuff. But overall, this is just the way that I set up my game. I've seen a lot of comments saying, how do I set up my game? Does this structure look good? And nobody really has made a video about it, so I wanted to do that. If you guys enjoyed the video, Hit a like, drop a comment if you have anything on, you know, comments about the video. Uh, thanks.